was up north, far up north, in, I was born in Ampula, so it was quite a distance up north, um, pretty much jungle. So the, the memories are hazy, but it was a very free life. I didn't, um, I didn't wear normal western clothes. I wore the kaplanas that the women wore. And it was a farm life, so you were up early, free, free reign of the place. So it was in August 1974 we were taken prisoners of the farm was actually the night that it happened at night because we were in our pajamas and in my parents room under the bed they had a, a, a bunker so we myself my mom my middle brother my mom was eight and a half months pregnant with my youngest brother we all went down into the bunker uh, into the bunker the farm was surrounded by the rebels by Frilimo. My mom actually said that they weren't going to kill us because they were surrounding us. We, we left with just our pyjamas and my mom had flip-flops on. Um, and as a result of walking through the jungle and kept on falling, she ended up with uh, actually holes in her legs that went septic. And they kept the men bound the whole time. So they they had their hands tied behind their back and um, they were released for um, sleeping at night and there was always two armed guards. And I can recall stopping off at a for water but the, the the river was actually, it wasn't a flowing river and the water was stagnant. So you had to push away the green stuff in the water just to, to be able to get something to drink. And my mom and the woman from the neighbouring farm were walked ahead of us. Myself and my youngest brother were carried on the soldiers' backs. I don't recall where the, where the neighbour's son was. Um, and I had asked during the war to actually be put down because I'd only see my mother once a day. I could see her but I couldn't talk to her, couldn't interact with her because she was far ahead. And I asked them to put me down. I said I wanted to stretch my legs. And the minute my feet hit the ground I ran forward to my mom. And the soldiers called out to each other. They caught me halfway and they literally passed me from one soldier to the next to the soldier that I was who was carrying me and they didn't ever put me down after that. Doesn't matter how I pleaded, I was on their backs. Based on what my my dad told me, um, I used to often cry for him and um, they wouldn't pass me to him because they had to walk their distances to cover in the day. So I was really allowed um, to be with my dad in the evening and obviously in the morning before they bound them up again. And obviously lunch times when they released him, um, when they stopped at watering holes. So, yeah. The word vicious comes to mind, not so much in, in the behavior, but in the things that they would say. Um, and also, you know, saying that my dad was dead. I said that shot my dad. When she went into labor, it took us to the hospital. After having me, one of the rebels walked in to look at the register of babies being born. So the doctor and nurse put my name down as someone Michelle. It's the only way they could keep me alive or keep us alive. And my parents were separated. My father, brother and sister went one side, myself and mother went one side. 
and after that we, the president, the late president in Simon Michel turned and said all prisoners must be released. Then they were reunited and we made the way back to Maputo. That time was called Lorenzo Mox. That's where my father changed my name to what I am today. When we got to South Africa, it was the government that had hosted us initially, and we ended up staying in flats in Hilbra. And my mom had gone to the embassy, and then obviously uh, my dad and this other gentleman also came through um, with the Red Cross, and that's how they got us united. We lost everything. Uh, we lost all the money in the bank, um, everything. We actually came to South Africa with nothing. Uh, my dad's first job that was given to him here was um, working at the Bimbos in um, Hilbra. It, it definitely shaped me. It, it shaped our entire family in different ways. And as individuals, we dealt with it in different ways. just one of those things that he couldn't get himself to do. He couldn't get in the car with me and go to Mozambique. And my mom didn't even want to hear about it. You know, there's, for her, she had closed that chapter of her life and she didn't want to experience it again. She loved a lot of things about Mozambique, but she could never go back. Never. She always had that fear, not the hatred, the fear of it happening again. come home from work, I would find her sitting there just like in a daydream and I ask her what you're thinking about and she'll tell me about life in Mozambique, how it was, what she misses actually as well and then she'll start crying on 